Hello everyone, this is Evangelist Chris Michelson and we've got another powerful program for you today on Salvation Today. I'm gonna to be talking again about faith today, part two on this series on faith. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Salvation Today. I'm your host, Evangelist Chris Michelson, and uh, I just am so excited to have you join us on this broadcast today. I believe Jesus is going to touch your life. He's going to heal you. He's going to save you. He is going to uh, richly encourage you and bless you in your walk with Jesus today. Uh, you know, I want to, and I also just want to take a moment to say thank you for sending in your prayer requests. You know, we get prayer requests every day from all over the world. Please continue to send in your prayer requests uh, to info at chrismichelson.com. You can send them into our team there, and our team will receive those uh, prayer requests, print them out. They give them to me. I read through them. I mean, sometimes it breaks my heart to see the struggle that some uh, of our viewers are going through. But I love to just pray and believe God uh, for miracles, to believe God for uh, wonderful things to happen in your life and, and in your ministry or whatever it is that you're going through. And so I want to encourage you, send in those prayer requests and let us know how we can pray for you because I believe Jesus can heal you just like he healed this person in this next video segment. I want you to watch this. Be encouraged by how Jesus can move in your life, in my life, and in all of our lives. Watch this. We'll be right back. What's your name? Rob. Rob, what was it that you were dealing with in your body? A pinched nerve on my left side. So it was very painful. And I have a procedure on August 22nd, but the pain is gone, and also I've had this cane for over a year just to get by with, and the strength in my muscles, my joints, my feet are so strong, I can retire this now. Was there, did you have a limp or was it, you had to use this cane in order to walk? Yeah, yes, to keep my balance because I kept wanting to fall. Okay. Now, can you show us tonight? Can you just walk down there and back for us? Sure, I'll hold it. I'd be glad to. Do you know who's healed you? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Now, I want to challenge you. Before you go and call that doctor and say you don't need the, the, the procedure, I want you to go and have him do a checkup on you. Have him check you out. And when he checks you out, he's going to find that you've been completely healed and you can come back and say, even the doctors have said that I have been healed in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Well, welcome back, my friends. Wasn't that an incredible testimony? God is so good, and He loves to heal. And so I want to encourage you, take, uh, take the time and write to us at info at chrismichelson.com. 
and let us know how we can pray for you and believe God for your miracle. You know, last, uh, last episode, we talked about faith. This is one of my favorite subjects um, in, the, in the entire Bible because the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so when we have faith, we are pleasing God when we put our faith in Him and in His Son, Jesus Christ. And so I love to preach about faith. I love to talk about it. But you know, a lot of people... They have faith in things that are not eternal. And, and, they, and sometimes people have faith in things that they believe to be eternal. But today I want to tell you that we don't have faith in religion. We don't have faith in the practice of trying to appease God. That would be the practice of religion. We have faith in a real person and his name is Jesus Christ. So today I want to encourage you to put your faith in Jesus. Last episode we talked about how when we have faith, that faith starts with Jesus and faith ends with Jesus. We talked about how Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith and that we can put our faith in him because he is the one who authored faith to begin with. He's the one who created faith in the first place. And so when you put your faith, don't put it in random things. Don't put it in religion. Don't put it into practices, but put your faith in Jesus Christ, the unchanging one, and God can begin at that place. And so we're looking through uh, the gospel of Matthew. Uh, We're reading the story about Peter. Now, I'm not going to read the entire story to you. We did that last uh, episode, but we read about how Peter walked out on the water to go to Jesus. So here was the situation. Peter and the other disciples were caught up in a storm. The wind was blowing. Now, Peter was a fisherman. He'd been out in many storms. So this must have been a really bad storm if he and the other disciples were very afraid, which they were. And here is this storm going on. They see what they thought looked like a ghost walking on the water. And Jesus said, do not be afraid. He said, it's me. It was Jesus walking on the water. Can you imagine that? And here was Jesus saying, don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus. And Peter says to Jesus, he said, Jesus, if that's you, call to me to get out of the boat and come to you. And see, Peter had a revelation here that he could call on the name of Jesus, that he could call to Jesus, and that if it was Jesus, Jesus could tell him to come out to him on the boat. And so Peter says, come out. Uh, he says, he says, Jesus called me to come out of the boat. And Jesus says one word, come. And here we see The second point, the first point I wanted to teach you guys about having great faith is to first put your focus and your eyes on Jesus. He's the one who starts faith. He's the author of faith. Faith starts with him. It ends with him. The point, second point I want to teach you today is if you're going to have great faith, you need to realize that your faith is not based on feelings or emotions, but faith is based firmly on the Word of God. If you want to have great faith, first you've got to have faith in the right thing. You've got to have faith in Jesus. But if you also want to have great faith, when you have faith in Jesus, you need to put your faith in the Word of God. My friends, when you put your faith in God's Word, that is a firm foundation. This Word of God, it is God's Word. It is is absolutely true, 100%. This is the Word of God. You can put your faith in it. You can believe it with all of your heart and all of your soul. The Bible says that the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so when you put your faith in the Word, that Word is working. It's working even if you don't have your faith in it. But when you put your faith in the Word, that Word can start to work in your life and turn that situation around. We see that Peter here, here he is, he's in a terrible storm. 
and he sees Jesus and he says, Jesus, if that's you, call to me to come out onto the water. You see, Peter had a revelation. He had an understanding that if he put his faith in Jesus and Jesus gave his word, that Peter could believe the word of God, the word of Jesus. And so Jesus says to Peter, his reply was one word. Let's read it right here. Matthew chapter number 14, verse 29. It says, let me back up to verse 28, actually. It says, and Peter answered Jesus and said, Lord, if it's you, command to me to come out under the water. And verse 29, so when Jesus, so Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. My friends, Peter walked on the water. He took that big foot of his. He put it over the edge of the boat. He put it down on the water and he found that that water was holding him up. And he took one, took one foot and put it on the water and he put the other foot out on the water and Peter began walking on the water, on top of the water. He did something that was impossible because he believed the word of Jesus. He believed that when Jesus said come, he could put his faith on the word of Jesus. And so my friends, I know that it says here that Peter walked on the water, but God gave me a revelation a long time ago about this very scripture. Peter wasn't walking on the water. Oh yes, his foot was on that wet surface. But what was he really walking on? He was walking on the word of God. Every step Peter took with his foot on the water, he wasn't standing, his faith wasn't on the water. His faith was on the word that Jesus spoke. His faith, he, in his mind, he heard Jesus say, come, come, come. And every step Peter took, he was reminded, he had faith in that word, come, come, come. Every step he took on the water, his faith began to grow and began to rise because he knew that he can trust the word of Jesus Christ. My friends, if you want to have great faith, don't put your faith in your emotions. Don't put your faith in your feelings, but put your faith in the word of God because it is a firm foundation. You can rest in the, in, in the word of God. You can stand on the word of God. When you're going through trouble, when you're going through trials and tribulations, when you don't know what to do, my friends, you need to open up the Bible, the word of God, and begin to read it and allow that living word to get in your soul. And as you read the Bible, that faith begins to build. Faith begins to rise. Why? Because Jesus is the word of God and, and, and the word of God is Jesus. And Jesus is the one who created the faith in the first place. And he created the word of God because he is the word of God. And so when you put your faith in Jesus, he is the one who created faith. And when you read the word of God, you're reading the words of Jesus and your faith can grow. It can expand and anything can happen according to the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen? Isn't that awesome? I'll tell you, God gave me this revelation many years ago. And, uh, and it changed my life forever. That when we put our faith in Him, we don't put our faith in our emotions. We put our faith in Jesus and in His word. That's a firm foundation. You see, I know some people... They tell me, they say, Chris, I don't know what to do. I'm going through this situation. I'm going through this terrible uh, situation in my life. And they allow their emotions to control them. Fear comes in. Worry comes in. Doubt comes in. And they begin to put their faith in their emotions. You see, you can put your faith in what the Bible says. You can put your faith in what God says. Or you can put your faith uh, in your emotions, 
in your feelings. My friends, I want to tell you, don't put your faith in your emotions or your feelings. They will change every single day. One day you wake up and you're feeling great and you're on top of the world. And if you put your faith in your feelings, you're saying, yes, Jesus, yes, God, praise God, everything's great. But the moment somebody cuts you off on the highway or the moment somebody does something wrong to you or says something mean to you at work, if you put your faith in your emotions, all of a sudden your emotions will dictate how you believe and how you react. But if you put your faith in the word of God, you can, you can, be, uh, you can conquer all of those fears, all of those insecurities, all of those bad things that you're going through. And God can help you to conquer that and to overcome those things in Jesus name. I love what Smith Wigglesworth once said. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was an incredible evangelist back in the early 1900s. He would see many people healed. In fact, it is documented that Smith Wigglesworth saw more saw 29 people. This is documented. 29 people who were raised from the dead in his ministry. It's a documented fact that he prayed for 29 people and they raised from the dead in Jesus' name. He, was, he saw incredible miracles, incredible miracles. And this is what Smith Wigglesworth once said. He said, I'm not moved by what I see or how I feel. I am only moved by one thing, the Word of God. You see, my friends, we can't put our faith, we can't put our, 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 feel, uh, our faith into our feelings or our emotions. We can't put our faith into how we feel. We put our faith in the Word of God. You, I tell you, my friends, if you're going through something, you've got pain in your body. Listen, I know what it's like to struggle with pain and, and, and these different things. And when you're going through that, it's easy to get off into putting your faith in your feelings. Uh, and I'm not saying that you just discredit how you feel, but when you have faith in the Word of God, you say, you know what? I don't care how I feel right now. The Bible says that if I, that if I pray, that if, that if I go to somebody and they lay hands on the sick, they can recover. The, and so when you pray and you believe the Word of God, even in the midst of feeling terrible, even in the midst of going through this terrible sickness or disease or circumstance in your life. I remember several years ago, I was in a situation where uh, I, can't ex uh, I can't share with you all the details of this story, but I was in a place, in a situation where I was going to minister to some people. And when I was going to minister to these people, there was a lot of people around me who could potentially hurt me. They had guns. They were, they, 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 I wasn't sure if they were for me or if they were against me. And I had to go into this situation and I had to go in and minister in this situation and I was very afraid. I walked into that situation I was with a friend of mine and we're walking in to this situation and I remember thinking, oh Lord, I might lose my life today going to minister to these people here. And I will never forget my friend leaned over and said, Chris, this could be it. I mean, this could be, this could be how, we, how we lose our life. This could be how we die. And I remember fear gripping my heart and I just... It was almost like paralyzing this fear that came over me. And then I began to remember what the Word of God says. The Word of God says in Isaiah 40, 54, 17, that no weapon formed against you will prosper or succeed. I began to remember these different scriptures. Psalm 118, verse 17, that I shall live and not die, and I will declare the works of God. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. The Bible says uh, in, in Romans 8, 
37 that I am a more that I'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me. And so I began to remember the word of God, remember the truth of the scripture. And when I put my faith in the truth of God's word, all of a sudden my faith began to rise and I started to say, I'm not going to die in this place. This is not how I'm going to go down. I believe God's going to protect me. I believe God's going to use me in this situation. And we went in and God did incredible things there that day in Jesus' name. And so I want to encourage you, my friends, if you're going through something, if you have a challenge in your life, put your faith in the Word of God. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus in this way, you don't know if you're going to die and go to heaven. My friends, today you can put your faith in the Word of God. You can put your faith in Jesus and He can heal you, He can save you, He can set you free and he can give you a new life in Christ in Jesus' name. The Bible says that we are all sinners. All of us have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Not one of us is perfect. There's only one perfect one, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so when you put your faith in Jesus, he can save you. And the Bible goes on to say in Romans, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believe in our heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, the Bible says we will be saved. You shall be saved. It's a promise from God. You can put your faith in His Word and in His promises. So when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and when you believe in your heart that He is the Son of God, that He did die for our sins, that He did raise from the dead in Jesus' name, you can believe this Word. It is unchanging. It is the Word of God. It is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And that Word of God can save you and change you and change your situation right now today in Jesus name because it's true and so my friends if that's you you've never received Jesus before you've never given your life to him or maybe you're saying Chris I don't know if I'm saved I don't know if I die today I don't know if I will go to heaven or not my friends you should never have to live with that question in your mind so long as you know this truth that Jesus Christ loves you, that he paid the price for you. He died for your sins so that you could be forgiven and saved and so that you could know today because of what Jesus did for you, you are saved and you will be saved in Jesus' name. And if you want to have that assurance and know today you're saved, you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you're forgiven, and when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Just repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, I come to you today, a sinner in need of salvation. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From this day forward, I turn from my sin. I turn to you, Jesus, and I promise to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friends, if you prayed that prayer, God has saved you. If you prayed it and meant it from all of your heart, I want to encourage you, now run after Jesus. Run away from all of your sin. Run away from all of that bondage and run after Jesus with your whole heart and never look back again in Jesus' name. My friend, uh, please, if you prayed that prayer, contact us uh, at info at chrismichelson.com and let us know that you receive salvation so we can pray for you. We'll be right back after this short break. Evangelist Chris Michelson is preaching the gospel in some of the most unreached and challenging countries around the world. Just last year, their ministry saw 124,417 people come to faith in Christ near the Middle East and in the face of great danger. Yet God has given Evangelist Michelson and his team divine strategy and divine protection to see such a great harvest. Now you can partner with the ministry of Evangelist Chris Michelson and help them reach one million people for Jesus Christ this year near the Middle East. The challenges in this part of the world are great, but as we change one heart at a time, by sharing the gospel, God begins to change a nation. And then, 
the entire world for His glory. Your monthly partnership of any amount will go directly into seeing thousands and even millions of people near the Middle East come to faith in Jesus Christ. Together with evangelist Chris Michelson and his team, you can change the world by bringing the gospel to the most unreached nations on the planet. All gifts are tax deductible and go directly to the soul winning nonprofit ministry of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To become a monthly ministry partner, use the information on your screen to partner today. Your partnership in the harvest is needed now more than ever to see the nation saved. Well, welcome back, my friends. Uh, I want to encourage you. If you prayed that prayer for salvation today, make sure you contact us and make sure you let us know that you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Well, we want to pray for your prayer requests. Uh, many of you have sent in these every week, every day we get these requests. We want to pray for them. If you haven't even sent them in yet, take the time. Send them in at info at and uh, Make sure you contact us so we can print those out and lay hands and pray for your requests in Jesus' name. In fact, just a few weeks ago, a friend of mine who has been uh, with me on some of these TV shoots, he was here one day, uh, many, many times with me on these TV shoots, and he remembered how we always pray for the sick. Well, his wife got sick. She was really sick one day. She was, ended up in the hospital, and he was asking people to pray for her, and he remembered our TV show, and he remembered this prayer segment. So he pulled up his phone. He went to YouTube. He fast-forwarded to the prayer time that we're going to do right now, and he prayed the prayer that I was praying. He played it over his wife, and his wife got healed in the hospital listening to this prayer time on our program in Jesus' name. And so listen, let's pray. Let's believe God for your miracle. Put your hand on your heart, close your eyes, and just receive right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are the healer, that you are the savior, that you're the deliverer in Jesus' name. And so Lord, we pray right now for all of those that are watching, for all of those who have written into us and sent their prayer requests. We pray right now, we join our faith together with theirs and we put our faith in Jesus. We put our faith in the word of God that if any, that two or more gather in your name, you are there with them. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed in Jesus name. All sickness go, all, all cancer and tumorous things leave your body right now in Jesus name and be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all the time we have for you today, my friends. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time on Salvation Today. This program has been made possible by the friends and financial partners of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To learn more about Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries, go to our website at chrismichelson.com or write to us at P.O. Box 771102, Orlando, Florida 32877. You can email us your prayer requests by sending them to info at chrismichelson.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evangelist Chris Michelson.